Hey guys, I'm in an oxbow on the side of the river. I am down here at Alabama River. I found a campground that had a ramp at the back of it. It's got standing uh, cypress trees there you can see. And there's one dock back here in this river. And when I say that, most of the locals and most people who know this river is gonna know where I'm at. I'm at Jackson Lake. All it is is a lake off the side of the river. It gives a uh, uh, eddy, a current break. It gives the crappie a place to go to when that the river's rolling. It gets them out of the current, gets them uh, over where they can eat. There's all our sponsors. We appreciate you guys. Now let's get to it and let's see what this lake has to offer. Let's go, baby. All I'm doing is running around and I'm panning left to right and I'm looking out in front of me and right there's a crappie sitting there. He's at 45 feet out. When it gets about 35, that's when I'm gonna start uh, casting. He is 18 foot deep, 42 feet out right now. So I'm gonna grab my little rod, got my little jig, and I'm gonna start zinging it at him and see if we can't close the deal. All right, he's at 40 feet right here. I want to get up just a little bit closer to try to see if he's going to try to go down on me or not or if he's going to stay up in the water. And I just found another one right at 45 feet that's hanging up. The one I was going after has went to the bottom. So I'm going to pitch it to one up top and see what happens. Got him. Mm -hmm. He's running to the boat, and that's a good fish. Good old male black crop. Good old male black crappie. Cast it and sealed the deal with one. Let's see, he was suspended 12 foot down, even though the water temp is 65 degrees. I'm in 26 foot of water. He was still suspended down about 12 feet. Boom. Bye, baby. Same deal as yesterday. Casting that chartreuse uppercut. Closing the deal, let's go. Right there, you can see that fish swimming through and that other really bright return right there. There's another one swimming down in there. That's what we're approaching very slow. Right now, they're 20 foot out and I'm looking 30 feet deep. <clears throat> and I'm just making a very slow approach to them. I'm gonna try to drop straight down in there instead of pitching out and letting it pendle them back. Because if I do that, I'm gonna end up getting hung up. But right there, that's my target fish. Let's get in there and see if we can't get him. He swam to the bottom on me. Switch directions. So what I did, I pitched about 10 feet in front of the direction it was heading to try to get the bait down in front of it before it got past it. That way I wasn't behind it. Got him. Oh, feels like a good one too. Oh my God, it is a good one. Come here, baby. Don't you get off there. We want a picture of you, big si Oh my goodness. And that right there is why you use a net. That jig just ripped out on me. Big old white crappie. The last one we called here. The last one we called here was a black crappie out here in this open water. Now we just landed a stud of a white crappie out in open water. Yes, sir. Big old pretty thing. Go home, baby. I love this open water fishing. I'm able to keep it simple, open water fishing. Uh, just a six foot rod, uh, open face reel, and a jig. 
and I believe that's why that it's working better than a minnow because that jig's not able to run away from that fish. The jig goes exactly where that I put it where a minnow will be trying to run here and there whenever it gets close to the fish. That's why a lot of times jigs will work better than actual live bait, especially when they get in this uh, pre-spawn mode. They're just kind of lingering out here, waiting for the temperature to get just perfect for them to go to the flats or up on the bank, which ain't very far. I'm 150 feet off the bank or so, and I'm in 26 feet of water. So it's a very steep ledge, so they don't have very far to go to be able to get into where they want to spawn. Great staging pattern is what we're on right here. Giant right here, boys. Oh my God. <clears throat> Come here, baby. Come here. We gonna work for this one. <laughs> oh, he just got loose. Oh my God, what a fish. Oh my God, my line is wrapped under the boat rope that's tying that boat off. Okay, it is loose. Get it reeled up here. <laughs> oh my God. Look what a fish. Oh my God. That is so awesome. That is a giant, giant fish that I just, uh, I just had to really weave <laughs> that rod in there as y'all got to see now that was a predicament i wish i had a cameraman on here to show you what i just had to go through to land this giant black crappie that is a good two and a quarter pound fish just a absolute stud of a fish i'm trying to get back here a little bit so i can screen caption this to get a picture of it let me pose here for a second there we go. I'm gonna let it go. Shoot, that thing is still mad. God, I love this. This is what gets you into it. This is what gets you stuck on it. This is what gets you out here on the water, outside the house. You gotta get out here and try some of this because I am jacked. That dock is full of them. I'm getting ready to get right back in there and try it all over again. I'm gonna calm down just a little bit. I, I got a little shake in there. I uh, saw him coming, I was tore up, I didn't know what to think. I honestly thought it was largemouth bass. And when he hit, all he did was grab and put a little pressure on it and I was able to uh, set the hook with a 14 foot rod and this dude has got a roof over it. I'm gonna take some cell phone footage so you can see this. This was awesome. There it is guys. I got that fish right in between that pontoon and the dock right there. And what do they look like on live scope? That right there, there's two more of them, the same exact size as that last fish. And all these up here are crappie too. Every last one of them. This dock is plumb loaded down. So I'm gonna get back in there and see if I can get another one of them studs. Right there, when I caught that fish up in there, I actually let him run out past his tune, netted him on this side, tripped my bail on my reel and just drug him out after i got him in the boat that's when i reeled up and i got it back over that rope and finished out the video oh yeah baby let's go baby i'm gonna see if i can't get wiggled back inside this dock here again i'm surprised i didn't tear up nothing but it worked out to where that uh i was able with having the crappie brakes on the back of the boat I can hit this other button here by my foot and back myself up off. That way I ain't sitting here bumping this guy's boat and being disrespectful. Because if that be the case or the wind was blowing, I wouldn't be able to fish this dock. Because at the end of the day, you have to be respectful of 
these people's belongings. And we were able to get that out, ethically release it. That was a dinosaur. Let's see if we can find another one. There's another one of them giants sitting right there. Well, there's three, and here comes another. That's one of them toads. Those are two pound fish. That's 18 foot out. I'm looking 30 foot deep. That's what a over two pound crappie looks like on live scope right there. Oh wow, there's a large mouse sitting up there. You can tell that his head, he's more of a bulldog style. He's real heavy in the front end and real light in the back end. That's how you can tell the difference in a large mouth versus crappie. Got him. That one there ain't near the size of that last one. But it makes me happy. And that's all that matters is having fun. Now that's a good 11 inch fish there. Yes, sir. Now on that rod, I had that uh, margarita small fry rigged up and you see it tail I'm trying my best to hold my hand still and it has the action and the size and the presentation of what these fish are wanting here and this right here is about to get fun my boat is spun so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna make another loop out here and come straight back in that way I can keep everything on camera and on the live scope and get y'all some great footage let's do it again here we go. Got him. Got him. Let's see if I can drag him out of here. That one ain't that big, I don't think. Oh, don't slide over, pontoon. That's how much I had to reel that up to be able to get that fish in the boat. Right there, guys. That is uh, something trying to fish like this. But they're out here in the open water behind me makes sense they'd be up underneath this dock most of the time up underneath the dock that's where you're going to find your black crappie most of the time your white crappie will be out here suspended in open water out in front of it which is 28 feet uh, not 20 feet off the port side of my boat here so i slid on over here i was looking 80 foot out and i could see them so i had to try to fish for them and that's just one thing never pass up a dock especially if it's close to deep water there will be fish on it they might not be right up underneath it they might be uh hanging 10 or 12 foot down from it which is uh, the best case scenario it makes it easier to catch them when they're suspended down below it well i've been rained on about four times since i quit filming there i kept on having to put all my stuff up so we decided as soon as the rain let up to go ahead and end this video what did you think about that that was one of the biggest black crappie I've ever caught in my life. It came out from underneath that dock, which that dock was just close to deeper water. We caught some fish out suspended in the deeper water in front of the dock, and then those were up underneath the dock getting shelter from the sun. Uh, they can get away from pressure of fishermen and just have a good safe place for them to stay most of the year. And every time I've been down here, they have been underneath that dock. What was the key to it? The key is having that deep water straight out in front of it. Even where I fished yesterday out on the main river, I fished some and I caught some underneath the dock that was right on the edge of the channel ledge on the main river. It just gives them a spot that they can get up in and get behind. Most time there's boat tunes or something that'll give them a break in the current and just let, give them a place to hide. So don't ever overlook the docks, especially if they're close to deep water. We appreciate y'all tuning in, guys. As always, hit that like button. Please subscribe. We'll be coming back at you with some more great footage soon. See ya.